Professional photographers shoot in RAW to preserve as much detail as possible to get the most out of their shots. However, if you ever worked with RAW, you know that it's meant to be processed by a RAW image editor to make the images look their best. With so many RAW editors in the marketplace, you might be asking yourself, which one is the best RAW editor to get? So that's what we're going to be answering in today's video, where we are going to list the top 5 RAW editors for 2020. But before I do that, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me make more videos. I'll be basing my ranking on the following criteria. The quality of the raw processing, ease of use, essential features, and price paid. I'll be editing the same set of photos taken with different cameras and comparing the results. So you can get a sense of the real world effectiveness of the products. So let's get right into it. At number 5 on this list is Pixelmator Pro, so let me talk about the positives. First is the price. It's great value at only $25. US It has an elegant and intuitive interface, and its performance is fast and responsive. It has useful features like selective color adjustment, which I can use to enhance the orange of the sky or desaturate the grass in this image. How about the negatives? What's keeping Pixelmator Pro at the lower end of the list? The main thing is the adjustment sliders are not as effective as its competitors. As you can see here, the shadow slider doesn't only brighten the shadows like it's supposed to, but also brightens the lighter areas like the sky. This means that the quality of the adjustments are less than ideal. You can see this behavior in other photos as well. Also, I've noticed it struggles with really dark shadows. As you can see here, it doesn't go far enough to properly expose the image. When it comes to the highlight slider, it also has some issues. Notice as I try to reduce the highlights in the bright sky, it loses contrast and definition, which should not be the behavior of this tool. Finally, Pixelmator Pro lacks essential raw editing tools, which users have been clamoring for for quite a while. For example, it doesn't have a clarity adjustment, which I could use to enhance the midtone contrast and make an image pop. In this image, I would want to enhance the detail in the clouds and the rock formation, but I don't have the tools to do that with. Also, it's missing noise reduction and lens correction, which is available in other editors on this list. At number four is Apple Photos. So what do I like about Apple Photos? Just like Pixelmator Pro, Photos has an extremely responsive UI with a comprehensive tool set. As you well know, Photos is also free because it comes with OS X. In terms of performance, the tone adjustment sliders perform notably better than Pixelmator. For example, you can see the shadow slider targets the dark areas more accurately than Pixelmator Pro. It also does a better job of properly exposing dark shadows, as you can see here. Highlight sliders perform better than Pixelmator. Lowering the highlight slider reveals more detail in the sky as should be the case. I like that it also has a definition slider, which works similar to but is not as effective as a clarity slider. Just like Pixelmator, it has selective color adjustment, which I can use to enhance the orange in the sky or desaturate the grass in this image. Let's compare the editing results of Apple Photos with Pixelmator Pro. At number 3 is Affinity Photo. Just like the editors before it, I like its extremely responsive UI and comprehensive toolset. In my tests, the shadows and highlights slider performs better than both Pixelmator and Photos. In this example, you can see that as I adjust the shadows, only the shadowy areas are affected, leaving the brighter sky untouched. Same goes for the highlight slider. When I decrease the highlights, it does a good job of bringing back detail onto the sky. I also like its implementation of clarity adjustment tool. Notice as I increase the clarity, it nicely adds detail and really makes the image pop. In addition, Affinity Photo has lens correction, which is really important in raw editing. Now what are the negatives of Affinity Photo? While its tone adjustments are generally good, there are some flaws. 
One example is lightening the shadows with a shadow slider also lightens the black tones and that reduces the contrast in the image. I found myself needing to counteract this by bumping up the contrast slider to keep the black levels where I wanted it to be. So that is really not ideal. Also in its raw editing interface, it doesn't include selective color adjustment, but you do have it by clicking develop to use HSL adjustment layers. But that's a lot of extra steps to do a simple task. In addition, I've mentioned before that Affinity's HSL adjustment doesn't work as intuitively as other photo editors. Affinity Photo's noise reduction though is one of the best implementations. But again, it's not included in this raw editing interface. And again, you need uh, some extra steps uh, just to reduce noise. In addition, Affinity Photo has a generally more complicated UI than the other editors on this list. So some examples are you have to click a radio button just to do a shadows and highlights adjustment. And then there's no button to compare the original to the edited version where every other raw editor seems to have one. So let's compare the editing results of Affinity Photo with photos. Number two is Adobe Lightroom. The industry standard Adobe Lightroom comes in at number two. Lightroom's performance is really fast and its UI is fairly simple to navigate. Lightroom in my tests has really the best performing tone adjustment tools among all the editors in this list. Notice how well the shadow slider targets the shadowy areas and notice as well that it's able to lighten the shadows significantly more than any of the other editors while still being able to maintain contrast and black levels in the image. In this difficult backlit scene, Lightroom was the best performing editor able to bring out details on the subject's face which the other editors couldn't match. I also think the highlight slider is the best implementation it reduces the highlights while maintaining excellent contrast and detail. Lightroom's clarity implementation is also the best. You can see how nicely the image looks after the clarity adjustment with no visible artifacts. In addition, Lightroom has a complete tool set with an excellent implementation of selective color adjustment, lens correction, and noise reduction. So with all those good things, what's the main flaw of Lightroom? Well, the main thing holding back Lightroom is the price of around 114 US dollars a year subscription. That's a lot of money to be paid for photo editing. And like many others, I'm not a big fan of the subscription model. But if you have the budget, Lightroom's tools just work and will give you outstanding results with very little effort. So let's compare the photos of Adobe Lightroom and Affinity Photo. So that brings us to the number one raw editor for 2020. So what's the number one raw editor? The number one raw editor is Luminar. Luminar's interface is very well designed and really easy to use. Its price is around 100 US dollars, which you get to own forever. While I don't believe Luminar's adjustment tools perform as well as Lightroom's, it's awfully close. The shadows and highlight slider is able to target effectively while maintaining excellent black levels and contrast. Luminar also has more raw editing features compared to Lightroom. It has selective color adjustment, check. Lens correction, check. It has excellent AI tools like AI accent and AI structure, which uses the power of machine learning to make automatic adjustments to a photo, and they do really work well. If you're into portraits, Luminar has an excellent AI tool for that, here I'm going to add contrast to the eyes and add some light to the face. You can see how easily this job is done with Luminar's interface. In addition, Luminar supports adjustment layers, something Lightroom doesn't even have. So what about the negatives? Well, as I've mentioned, Luminar doesn't work as well as Lightroom. For example, in this difficult backlit image, 
you can see that Lightroom nicely lightened the face with its shadow tool. Luminar, on the other hand, couldn't do the same thing. I also find its noise reduction is less effective than its competitors. Finally, Luminar's performance was the most sluggish among all the editors on this list. Not sure if it's because of the AI algorithms, but it would take a second or two on my old MacBook Pro for certain adjustments to take effect. Bottom line, Luminar's comprehensive feature set, excellent results on par with Lightroom, coupled with its non-subscription price, is a significant better deal in my mind than Lightroom's offer. So let's compare Luminar's editing results with Lightroom's. So there you have it. That's my list of the top raw editors for 2020. Do you agree with my selections or disagree? Do let me know in the comments. I love to hear from you. Also, if you know any other excellent raw editors that deserve to be in the top five, do write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. And please, before you go, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Till the next time, bye.